Hey, Steve at the Graphite Lab here. Hope you're doing all right. I'm going to be putting together a tutorial for you on how you can take your estimates from looking like this, the standard onboard service type and proposal appearance, um, and really making them into whatever you'd like it to be. I know that a lot of folks, whenever you come on to Service Titan, the, one of the downsides is, well, now I can't necessarily use my proposal template that I've had running for you know, years now, right? You have one PDF, you gussy it up, you have all the information you want, you put your own branding to it, you can lay it out in as many pages, give as much detail as you need. Whenever you move into Service Titan, this is your estimate, right? This is what you get. So. There is a fairly easy way to set this up so that whatever template you used to have will be able to continue, um, continue running. It'll even take in any information you have about the customer, price book items, notes the technician made, essentially give you anything you would ever get out of an estimate through Service Titan and then a whole lot more. Um, so all you gotta do, make sure that you do have a blank, um, blank PDF of the proposals that you would uh, you would typically use and we're gonna go to there's a website called pdfescape.com now this may be something that you've uh, you've heard about and even if you look through service Titans knowledge base this has changed a wee bit so the the appearance is a little different than it once was but functionality is all still the same what I'm gonna do is click the free online editor and I'm gonna upload a PDF to PDF escape now once I do so, right, I could drag and drop. I'm gonna choose a file here. There are a collection of templates out here. I'm just gonna throw in a standard old plumbing quote. Why not, right? Of course, for your company, especially if you have one with cover pages with about us, um, going over the benefits of working with your shop, by all means, feel free. Like absolutely anything that you would include on a formal proposal. As you'll see here, this is just like a standard template that, uh, that Service Titan has put together. It's nothing crazy, but gives a, a little bit to work with so that I could use this for sake of example. Beyond this, there is one other thing I would recommend you pull up, which uh, if you go to help.servicetitan.com, right, just takes you to the standard old knowledge base. And once on here, what you're going to want to search for is smart fields. It's the only one that comes up. You will need this uh, this table. You'll see why in a second. Um, beyond that, let's get to work. So, as I'm looking here, right, you may be thinking if I uploaded this into Service Titan, great, we're good to go. There's a spot in forms where you can hit upload PDF. It's not going to be enough. Um, whenever you do that, your technicians are then taken to a world where they have to create the entire estimate within Service Titan and then open this PDF, go into that little doodle mode and fill the whole thing out. That does nobody any favors. We can automatically have this PDF inherit all of the information that Service Titan receives. So, how do we do this? What we want to do here is hit, there's this little um, uh, sheet with a couple lines in it, I guess. I'm struggling here. <laughs> the uh, form field, that's our, that's our ticket. So. I'm gonna go form field, I'm gonna set it to text, first and foremost, right? I'm just gonna start adding this thing all over the place. Customer name, address, maybe that one's a little bit longer, right? So I will, a little bit finicky with my mouse, I suppose, but for sake of example, I'll just throw this thing here. Phone number, that looks about right. Email, I'll make this one a little bit longer, right? Um, Job name, good enough. Phone number, good enough. Address, and essentially, as you can see, you drop this little form field on any line that you otherwise would be typing into, right? That's the, uh, the name of the game here. Now, if you have check boxes that will need to be, uh, be toggled on and off, that's a little bit of a different one here, and I'll show you in one second. So, we've got that now. I'm just going to wheel my way down, I'm trying to do numbers, same basic premise. I'm just going to go form field, right? I'm going to go text, set it, and I'm just going to block it into small thing right here, right? 
block it out, small things here. Description is going to be inheriting text. And you just essentially anywhere that a person could figure this or could fill this thing out, figure you want to put a form field in there. Now, if we scroll on down here, you're going to see a couple of check boxes. In that instance, not too dissimilar. We go form field, we'll set this thing for checkbox, right? And we say that's where these check boxes lie. Right? If you need to, you can make these bigger, smaller, whatever, right? But we're just going to largely do this stuff. If you want this to be just drop downs, you can set form fields for drop downs. If instead of check boxes, you have those radio buttons where you can, you know, just uh, pick one out of the out of the circles. There's form fields for that as well. You just want to make sure that if it's something you're going to inherit text or numbers, you put a text form field. It's a check box. You put a check mark here. If you really want to get creative with it, it's not necessary for for what we're trying to do, but. You can do drop down, submit buttons, reset buttons. We won't need that for what we're trying to do though. All right, so once we have this thing looking how we want it to, and granted, I am just doing mine for sake of example. So at this point, we are going to save it, which is right here, All right? Saving document structure. We're now going to download it as its own PDF. At this point, right, whenever I open it, you'll notice I have these fillable items. Now, we're not done yet. You may think now, let's bring this thing into service tight and it's all fillable. Not so, not necessarily so. What you want to do now is we're going to leverage these smart fields. All right, so you want to identify what am I trying to pull from service Titan. If you drop this field here, that is what will, uh, what will make this data automate, right? If we don't use these, yeah, it's something a tech can fill out and can type the answers into rather than a doodle. Still manual effort, still not something we're looking for, right? So we are going to go here where we've got company name, address, phone number. So we'll say company name is the customer that we're working with. I'm going to go customer name. So I'm going to copy this, drop that right in there. Nothing to it. Address, bill to address. That's BTA. That's our code. I'm going to copy that, drop that right in here. Phone number, bill to phone number. And customer phone one, perfect. Email, customer email one, perfect. If you want to throw custom fields in there, CCF1, CCF2, CCF3, depending on what custom fields you, uh, you have, they just go in order of where they're listed on your system. Um, job name, if you've given this job an actual title, right? You're just JN, easy enough. Address, wherever the location address is, right? So let's go location, address. And you can do and street name, street number, just a street name, however you need this thing to look, right? You wanna be very deliberate with the, uh, the smart codes you're putting into your forms, right? Here and now, job description. Let's say I want this thing to just show me what I entered for a voice summary, right? Let's see, invoice, subtotal, summary, IS, so it's probably safe to assume job summary with JS. Put that right in here, right? If I wanted this thing to instead show me a description of items, right? On, on items that are on my invoice. Invoice item name, code, and description. So I'm gonna just say I want the description, right? Put that right over here instead. If I want to have um, the quantity for it, item quantity right here. If I wanted to instead list the item price. Now with the check boxes, you don't have to worry. Check marks are just going to leave as they are. No need to uh, fiddle with those. Now that I've got this tuned up the way I want it to be, I'm going to download it with my changes, right, and save that. Sure, let's replace it. Why not? At this stage of the game, this will be able to now upload as a form. So we we'll go in to my forms and keep in mind this being a dummy account. We may not have too many of these things to work with, but add form, title this thing, PDF estimate. Do we really need any of these guys here? Maybe not, both tech and office can see it. Honestly, I would recommend uh, 
keep this thing office side only, the technicians, they don't have to change a lick of what they're doing, right? Everything they're doing in the field is gonna be inherited onto this uh, PDF. So you really don't even have to worry about, hey, technicians, it's a new workflow. To them, nothing changes at all. You just tell them, hey, don't email the, uh, the estimate anymore. We'll do that from the office and you're okay. So at this point, right, business units, if you wanna put it for specific business units only, go ahead. Browse, pick this one up, and any time that this form is applied to an invoice, or I'm sorry, applied to a job, it's just going to pull all of these uh, all of these data points in. Now, this will also, as you're seeing, uh, invoice service one. You can do that same thing with estimate service one. You just change the I to an E, you know, and instead of uh, so then instead of I M I one P, it would be E M one P. It's it. it if you can uh, if you can go through and just start tweaking these things for if it says invoice, let me see if it'll do it for estimate. You just throw an E on there instead of an I. More often than not, you're gonna be very happy with the, uh, the results. It ends up taking in um, pretty much the, once you figure this, this format, it ends up taking in the, uh, the same naming conventions to these codes as you would think it would. So, um, once this thing is ready to go though, now I've got that set, I'm gonna save this. And let's see how this thing looks on an actual job, shall we? Okay, so I've got my water heater in Los Angeles here, Monica Jones. I look over here, this is what the estimate is. Whenever I look at my form, it inherits this information. Now granted, as you can see, you could probably do with stretching the address a little bit further out so that that encapsulates. If I had actually had legitimate uh, job items on here, you may wanna stretch your description out. But, end of the day, this is pulling whatever information that you're finding on this job, on this invoice, whenever the invoice loads for us, and on this customer. So what this is to say is if you have a proposal template that you've been using and you're still going through and manually creating these things for every big ticket that you're proposing to someone, just bring them in as, a, as PDF forms and it can largely do this work for you. Yes, as you can see, again with mine, since I threw it together over the course of a couple seconds, you don't quite have the, uh, the same level of perfection that you would if you sat here and really fine-tuned the thing, but same, uh, same principles still apply. If you have this smart fields here, PDF Escape is a free software. If you've got a template, just bring it in. Uh, I'd like to see how this thing would work for you. Feel free, reach out to us here at the Graphite Lab. We'll be more than happy to set up some time to chat. All right, thanks so much. Appreciate you hanging with us here and I will talk to you soon.